common query that we're regularly asked is how can you insert the customer's order number and include that information on your customer statements? So maybe adding in an extra column. In this video, we're going to guide you through those steps. Let's start with the basics. Now, if you have edited your layout previously, you may want to skip past this part of the demo. But we're going to start with the very basics. So in customers, we've got a customer selected that has an outstanding balance. We're going to go into statements. There's nothing flagged as a favorite layout just yet. We'll click layouts. And then the one that we're going to use for this demo is this one. So the A4 statement, grouped in outstanding items, plain paper, print or email. So we'll highlight that layout. We'll click edit at the top. This will open the layout within the Sage Report Designer. So we can see the design of that and we can start amending it at that point. But again, let's get back to basics first of all. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into report and into report settings. And I'm going to change the report name. And I'm just going to call it my statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same for the report description. So just call it my statement. And then we'll just OK that. That's going to make it easier for us to find that when we go into the list of layouts. But we will flag it as a favorite in a moment as well. What we'll also do is we'll go to file. And you, if it's a default layout that you are amending, you'll see that the save option is grayed out. So we need to choose save as and give it a, a new file name. So I'll just call it my statement and save it. You can see it, the file name changes at the top to see we're using the my statement layout. And if we just close out of the report designer very briefly, I'll scroll down to the bottom. You can see it's added it. So I've got that flagged as a favorite. If you haven't already flagged one as your favorite, just click on the little star. What that means is we close out of that screen. And then when we go into statements, because it highlights the favorites folder, your statement will automatically be selected for you. It'll be listed. So you no longer need to go into layouts and scroll down the list and try and find it. So we'll flag it as a favorite. That's available when you're working with reports as well and your invoices. So we'll go back to highlighting all the out. Click edit at the top. It takes us back into the report designer and we're ready to start making changes. Now what we want to do is move details across both the heading and in the main body of the statement to make a space where we can insert the customer's order number. So essentially adding in that extra column. Now, to do that, what we'll do is we'll highlight details first of all, the column heading. So we've got the bounding buttons around it there. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to drag that across a little bit to the, the right hand side. And for the details, we'll just highlight that one. So we're in the header number footer section. So make sure you've got details selected. Again, it'll put the buttons around it. And then just on the left hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the width of this one. You'll see the little blue line there indicating that I've got the left hand edge of the details that I've got selected at the moment. It's aligned to the details heading above. If you need more information about alignment and other options, do check that information within the help center. But I know it's aligned at that point and I can just release the, the mouse button. What I'll also do is for the inroads reference, I'm going to make that a little bit narrower as well. It's quite a wide field, this one, and you probably don't need that many characters. So we'll just click onto that one. And again, this time, reduce the width from the right hand side. So anyway, we're left with a space here between the reference and the details columns. And this is where we're going to insert the customer's order number. So when I'm talking about the customer's order number, it's the one that you would enter uh, when you're entering invoices and credits. OK, now what we'll do is I'm just going to click save at the top. So the one that looks like a little disk, give it a click and that will save where we're up to. So that's the basics covered. We're now ready to start using the join editor and joining tables so that we can insert the customer's order number. Now, the first thing we want to do 
is go into uh, report and then click joins. Right, now the first thing we're going to do at this point is we're going to add the invoice table. So in your, on your left hand side, you'll have a list of the tables that you've got available. And we're looking for the one called invoice. So this one here. And all we do is we'll just drag that across to the right hand side of our screen there. Now a good little tip at this point for the because of the rest of the procedure we're about to follow is to make it wider. We can also make it a little bit higher as well. So we'll just, with it selected, we'll just drag it so it's wider. I'll also make it a little bit longer as well. The other one we want to do that for is the one that's termed audit header. Now that one's already on the screen, so it's this one here. So again, I'll select it, make it a little bit wider, and then also increase the height as well. Just makes it a little bit easier for us to find what we're after. Now, from the audit header table, so this table here, what we want to do is simply at this stage to find the invoice reference numeric variable. So there should be an alphabetical order. So just scroll down. And it's this one here, invoice reference numeric. I'm just going to highlight that for the time being to make it a little bit easier to see it. What I'm also going to do is from the invoice table, I want to find the invoice number variable. So in this one, again, we can just scroll down. And there it is there, invoice number. Now what I want to do is from the invoice reference numeric, so this, this one here, and you must make sure you do it in this order as well. So hover your mouse over it, hold down your mouse button and we're going to join the two tables essentially the two variables together so we'll hold down your mouse button what we normally recommend is just drag it off to the side and then obviously come in at the side here and i want to link it to the invoice number and it'll put a line joining the two at that point so that's the first join complete what we now need to do is to select the join between the two tables, so this line here. So we'll give it a click, and then we want to look at the properties in the on the right-hand side. Now, you might want to make this a little bit wider, just so you can see more of it. And what we want to do is to change the join type. So the join type here currently says inner, and what we want to do is set that to parent outer. So we should have invoice reference numeric, parent outer, invoice number. Now what we'll do at that stage, we'll just actually we'll just collapse the properties panel on the right just to knock it back down. And then we click OK at the bottom, and that's just ready to go. We can now insert that variable or the data field as it's now known onto the template on onto our statement layout now just before i do that again i'm going to save where i'm up to so I'll just click save on your toolbar at the top i'll go to the file menu click save what we now want to do is essentially we're going to put a heading in here and then we're going to put the the data field in which will essentially pull through the customer's order number so to do that either from your toolbar you might have an add data field, you can click that. Or if you don't have that option available to you, listed on the toolbar at the top, just go to toolbox and then choose add data field. Both will do the same thing. What we want to do is then move the mouse into this header number footer section. So where we've got a gap, you'll find that your mouse turns to a cross. Give it a click and then the add data field will appear. What we want to do is look for the invoice table, which is this one, and you'll need to click on the plus sign to expand it. We're then looking for the customer order number. So we'll just scroll down. There it is there, customer order number. Select it, click OK, and it'll pop that into the gap for you. Now, it will be quite a lengthy field initially by default, but obviously you can play around with that if you need to, just to reduce the, the width of it. 
Now I'm just going to nudge it across to the left a little bit. So I'm just going to drag that with the mouse. Again, with it selected, I could use the cursor keys to move it left and right. But what I'll do, I'll just move it there. I'll say that's about in approximately the right position, but I will make it a little bit narrower. So I'll just drag that across and we'll, that's about right. We'll leave it at that. Final thing to do is I just want to put a heading in. Now, again, if you're familiar with a report designer, you'd be aware how to do this one. All you need to do, if I just click off that to deselect that customer order number, is just on the toolbar at the top, click Add Text, or I could go to Toolbox and also use Add Text. The other thing I could also do is I could right click, say, the reference heading. So right click, copy, and then just in the space here, if I just right click and paste. Now it's called ref at the moment, so I'll just get it roughly in the right position. So again, you'll see that the alignment guides coming through as I move that around. So that's aligned left to the left there of the customer order number. And if I just double click, what I'll then do is I will then change the text. And when I'm happy with that one, I'll just click off it. And that's essentially it done. So we're just going to save our changes. We'll close out of the report designer. We've still got our statement selected. Remember, we've got that flagged as a favorite. And if we now just preview that, you can set the transaction date range if you want to, because I'm using an outstanding statement only, it will give me a list of everything that's outstanding against the account. So I could just accept the full date range. If I did just want to set it for maybe the current month, what I can do is on this date picker field, gives you some of the quicker options to choose. So I wanted to do, do it for last month, for instance, it saves me having to key that in. But I'm just going to select, or uh, just accept the default date range. I'll click OK. It previews that one. And you can see we now have the order number pulled through. Obviously, there's one missing here because we, we haven't entered an order number against that particular invoice. But that's how you go about entering the customer order number and getting it to, to pull through onto your customer statements.